Hello students, myself Manatosh De, your English helpline on the go. Today I shall discuss a poem from Flamingo of Standard 12. The poem under discussion today is A Thing of Beauty, written by John Kears. Before I begin, let me give you a short introduction of the poet which will be followed by theme of the poem and stanza wise explanation literary devices and recapitulation of the poem so let's begin first short biography of john kids john kids is considered to be second generation of romantic poet with lord byron and pb shelley by the end of 19th century he became one of the most beloved of all english poets his poetry is characterized by the sensual imagery especially in series of odes his notable works are a autumn ode nightingale on first looking into chapman's homer ode on a gracian arm now let's move on to the theme of the poem the poem highlights how various objects of nature are a perennial source of pleasure for human beings a beautiful object is always treasured in our mind because it provides us eternal and everlasting joy an object of beauty never fades into insignificance but multiplies many folds whenever it returns to our mind the poem focuses on the theme of happiness and how it can be experienced now let's move on to stanza wise explanation uh, first lines one to five a thing of beauty is a joy forever its loveliness increases it will never pass into nothingness but will keep a bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing let me explain you the meanings of these lines the poet says that beauty stays forever with us it never fades away and it increases with the passing of time the poet means to say that i repeat an object of beauty never goes off with the passing of time rather it multiplies with passage of time according to the poet beauty is like a beautiful tree under whose shade all the creatures can sleep peacefully enjoy good health and relaxed breathing now let's move on to lines six and seven therefore on every morrow are we reading a flowery band to bind us to the earth let me now explain you the meaning of these two lines the poet says that with every passing day it is the beauty which fills us with immense joy to live on this earth with an object of beauty providing us sustenance of life we are being attached to the earth like all the flowers remain attached to each other in a garland of flowers now let's move on to lines 8 to 11 spite of despondence of the inhuman dearth of noble creatures of the gloomy days of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching now let, let me explain you the meaning the poet means to say that a beautiful object has such magnetic charm that it tends to overpower everything in spite of being depressed in spite of having shortness of virtuous people around in spite of our sad days trials and tribulations which tend to restrict us to find those things of beauty we overcome all limitations and find joy in recollecting the moment of happiness in our lives now let's move on to lines 11 to 13 yes in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the fall from our dark spirits the poet emphasizes on the fact that in spite of all shortcomings of life all the hurdles of life in spite of 
everything that comes as a stumbling block to the stepping stones towards success an object of beauty that is found in nature takes away our pain from our depressed mind so now let's move on to lines 13 to 19 such the moon sun trees old and young sprouting a shady boon for simple sheep and such are daffodils with with the green world they live in and clear rails that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season the mid forest break rich with the sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms now let me explain you the meanings of the lines the poet gives the examples of the sun moon trees daffodils and small rivers and forest fern which are the things of beauty found in nature and they are responsible for creating beautiful memories for us during our bad phase of life for example trees both young and old provide shades to young sheep daffodils by their green surroundings are a source of perennial source of pleasure for us clear streams streams refer to small river provide cool breeze and give relief from the hot season the forest fern of musk roses is also a refreshing treat for the eyes now let's move on to lines 20 to 24 and such too is the grandeur of the tombs we have imagined for the mighty dead all lovely tales that we have heard or read an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring onto us from the heavens brink now let me explain you while talking about the objects of nature that gives us immense pleasure the poet takes reference from our everyday life to justify that there is presence of joy even in the remembrance of famous people who are dead. They continue to inspire us with their contribution in the world, even though they are no longer with us. The poet further says in this reference that all beautiful stories of great people that we have heard or read are a source of perennial, that is endless pleasure for us as these stories continue to inspire us and help us sustain the hard times of our life. These stories are like endless flow of water from a fountain which are showered upon us from the almighty god we experience heavenly bliss when we take recourse to the life stories of great personalities they are like endless fountain from which mankind can drink elixir of life now let's move on to the literary devices used in the poem to begin with the rhyme scheme first with the structure and then the literary devices rhyme scheme a a b b c then when it comes to literary devices first is alliteration uh, as you can see on your screen slip sweet s sound is repeated band bean and noble nature simple sheep cooling cupboard okay here you can see the highlighted uh, bold uh, uh, red color okay suggest that repetition of the consonant sounds like b like n like s like c, c repeated okay in successive words now moving on to the next uh, literary device that is imagery uh, the examples of which are a flowery band to bind us sprouting shady boon that is trees giving us shade daffodils with the green world they live in meaning growing process of daffodils then clear rails here uh, clear rails refer to clear river uh, streams now let's let's move on to the next literary device that is called metaphor like for example immortal rings wreathing a flowery 
band reading a flowery band refers to the beautiful things of our life that bind us to the earth now the another figure of speech that is antithesis antithesis means opposite words placed together for example old and young okay so now let's move on to the recapitulation part of the poem the poem gives us the message that a thing of beauty is a joy forever in spite of the occasional bad patch in our lives things of beauty are a source of perennial pleasure that helps us to sustain the um, hard reality of life anything that gives us pleasure sustain us to face during our adversary any form of beauty that inspires us is like an endless fountain from which mankind can drink the elixir of life the poem conveys the message that anything beautiful remains engraved in our heart and helps us live life in spite of trials and tribulations so my dear friends um this uh, concludes the explanation of the poem uh, now for questions and answers kindly refer to my blog which is www.literaturewithmanatosh.blogspot.com dear students kindly subscribe to my channel which is learning with a difference and press the bell icon for notification of every new concept video that i upload for you so before i wind up let me wish to all my dear students 71st happy republic day take care and have a great day